Hello YouTube, this is Hemingray1893 saying, if you think the Home Depot is at the end of a railroad track, do not watch this video. In fact, never watch a video on my channel ever again. Anyway, like a lot of uh, rail fans out there, I have amassed a small collection of telegraph insulators, and uh, I don't really have a place to put them or to display them. Like a lot of rail fans that have these, or antique collectors, communications, history buffs, whatever, uh, they've just been relegated to sitting on a shelf or, uh, you know, being used as paperweights. So, uh, I've decided to build a unique display rack for them. I figure, you know, you could hang it up in a basement or a man cave or something, and uh, it would be a really unique thing to have in display. So that's what I've decided to do today. It will be intended for indoor or outdoor use, but uh, more precautions must be taken if used outdoors. But anyway, uh, let me just sketch up my idea to show you, and we can get started. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need is obviously some wood. Here uh, I wanted to go for kind of a realistic look, so I got this uh, weathered wood from work. I think this is old pallet wood and this was something else. Either way, they were sitting in the yard there for obviously a long time. You could use like fresh wood like this from the hardware store and then you could stain it or leave it as is. However, I wanted to go with this look. I suppose if you didn't have wood like this, uh, try looking on Craigslist for free. Someone's probably getting rid of wood or an old pallet or something. Or if you're really that patient, you could get that wood and just leave it outside for like six months. Anyway, so this right here is probably gonna be the backing plate and this is going to be the actual cross member as well as the support. I'm going to cut this into two sections. The main cross member probably being about 28 inches or so, and then the rest of it being the 45 degree support. So in order to do that, I got out, you know, a miter box. I don't know who made it, but it was made from the finest northern hardwoods. And it was bought at Montgomery Ward. So, you know, probably vintage. And of course, to mark up the wood, I have my vintage Amber Lumber Company pencil. I think they are long gone. I tried to do an internet search, couldn't find anything. Besides, try calling that phone number nowadays. And here they are, all the components, all cut. Now it's time to move on. All right, now before we uh, move on to assembly, I think we need to figure out how we're gonna mount the insulators onto the cross member. Now, one of the things I'd recommend, if you could get your hands on them, are you get some actual insulator pegs like this, because they actually have the threaded wood piece in them, and then you could just drill through the wood and mount the insulators like that, and uh, hmm, this wood is kind of thin compared to what they would actually use in the field. But considering how these aren't going to be holding wires or anything it's just for display i don't think this is a problem obviously there are a couple of problems with getting these pegs uh the first being they are kind of hard to come by at least from my experience and also uh you could like make something like them but making this part would require like a lathe which uh 
I'm guessing most people don't have access to at home. So they can't use the threading feature. So instead I'm going to uh, just like get some sticks or dowel rods and stick it in there. Which uh, should be adequate to hold insulators, again, just for display. Now in order to do this, I have my vintage Craftsman 10 inch sweep bit brace. I also have the power drill if it gets a little difficult, but I'm gonna drill about three quarters of the way through the wood, not all the way. You can go all the way if you want. Um, and then I'm going to make some pegs and stick them in there. So I'll just set up the camera so you can see me doing that because using a bit brace is kind of neat. I have everything set up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to start with a small bit. This is just a 3 16 and move my way up to maybe a half inch bit or so. I could always get the power drill and get out the spade bits if I need to go a little bit bigger. Looking at the length of this, I was planning on putting four insulators on it. Uh, on second thought, I think only three will work. And personally, I wouldn't want to make it any longer than this, or you might start putting like too much of a moment on your backing plate and on the screws that hold it. Anyway, start from the back and work our way forwards. What do we say? So these main holes for the pegs have been drilled thus far. I've also been taking the liberty to pre-drill some holes for fasteners on, you know, just everything. The backing plate right here where the cross member will sit and uh, on the 45 brace, which is also on the side of the cross member. And I'm doing that so when I put the fasteners through, you know, this is kind of aged wood. I don't want them to split well, if I put a screw through. So speaking of that, I do have uh, some fasteners here that I'm going to use. These two are just modern wood screws. Nothing special about them. But they're not going to be seen because they're going to go through the back of the backing plate into this surface right here. You see I've put one hole, I'm gonna put another one to line up with the second hole there. One of the things we have in our basement is we have an entire drawer set full of vintage fasteners we got from my great-grandfather. I don't know what it is about like old screws that look different from modern screws, but he's definitely got an aged look to them. They're a little tarnished, maybe a little rusted but this is gonna go on the bottom of the 45 brace. I figure since this is visible, we might as well use a vintage fastener. Now to put this in, I have this vintage Sears screwdriver. 
I have another one of these branded Dunlap. It's the exact same screwdriver, it's just a smaller size. Figure they just, whoever the contract manufacturer was, probably just put multiple names on it. Of course, Dunlap was a lower end brand sold by Sears from the mid 30s to the mid 50s. So who knows, this might have been made slightly after Dunlap was discontinued. I don't know. Then I have whatever this fastener is here. This is gonna attach the top of the 45 brace to the cross member. I figure I'm gonna take a pair of pliers right here, screw it in, take the nut off, put this threaded part through this hole, and then I guess you tighten the nut back on in order to securely hold it together. I think that's how that works, why not? And in order to do that, I have these vintage vacuum grip pliers. Vacuum grip. Made by the Ford Steel Products Company. You can see it used to be nickel plated, I believe it was patented, what does that say? 3821. So these were patented 99 years ago at the filming of this video. Of course, I think the reason they're called vacuum grip is because they got these little hollow nubs, I think, on the handle that I guess when your hand is on it, it makes a vacuum. I don't actually know if it works, but they were able to get a patent for it. So, okay. And then to put the uh, nut on, I have some assorted vintage Dunlap uh, wrenches. Hey, Dunlap again. We have two sets of them in our toolbox. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Maybe these are pre-war, these are post-war. These definitely look older than these because these are actual... I don't want to know. I don't want to say chrome vanadium, but, you know... Whereas you could see that these are unfinished or they're even painted black. And the black paint is coming off a little bit. Anyway, enough of my rant. I'm going to uh, get on this and start putting it together, see how it turns out. The main structure is now fully assembled. You can see where I've uh, put the hardware there on the 45 support to support the cross member, as well as hardware down here to mount the 45 support to the backing plate. I've also gone ahead and drilled holes for wall mounting. Also, I'll just show you this real quick. You can see how I've mounted the uh, cross member to the backing plate with those two wood screws. I've also just added a little bit of decoration. I got one of these aluminum tags that they sometimes put on trees and utility poles to track them. Uh, so I just nailed it there with a corroded galvanized nail, just cause. I could also show you how to artificially uh, corrode fasteners if you so desire this look. Anyway, the next thing to do Oops, you cannot see that very well. The next thing to do is to make the pegs. So we'll go ahead and get started with that in just a second. In order to make the pegs that the insulators would sit on, you could go to the hardware store or the craft store and always get half inch, three quarter inch dowels. Um, I've chosen to raid my firewood collection and just use uh, some of these. They're a little aged, but the wood is solid. And you can see where I've scraped off some of the bark with a pocket knife. And I'm probably gonna go do that down the line, you know, just so it looks even and uniform and it doesn't deteriorate. 
Although I am intending mine for indoor use, so deterioration is a little less of a problem for me. If you're using yours for outdoor use, I would uh, most certainly use new dowel woods, dowel rods, and probably stain them. You know, just to keep them all nice. Also, uh, just to secure these in place, I've obviously inserted them into the holes. I'm gonna squirt a little wood glue in the holes to hold them. But I'm not gonna do that quite yet because as you can see on this little broken brook field I'm using for testing, they need a few inches cut down off of them because the insulators would sit really high off the uh, cross member otherwise, which they wouldn't do realistically. So these just still need to be cut down a little bit further, but the wood used on these is solid. So, and again, on mine is for indoor use, so I'm not really too worried about it. An alternative that I actually just thought of to drilling holes in the top and sticking these in is you can go get yourself this is an old tool handle some three quarter inch dowel will also work and i realize if you take a couple of thousandths off of it it'll probably fit up in the threads this doesn't currently but cut it into sections about five inches long put them on the top maybe stick them in with a little wood glue instead of drilling holes, and just put a wood screw through the bottom to hold it. That might be a better setup if you're planning on using this outdoors, just because I feel like it's a little bit more secure. Even with wood glue, these might be a tad loose. Regardless though, they'll probably stiffen up once I put the wood glue in. So anyway, Continuing on, I have now uh, cut like two inches off each of the pegs. Let me grab one of my Armstrongs here. And I can show you that they sit now a more realistic height off the cross member. So that's good. Now, I did mention earlier, unless you have like a lathe with, you know, a threading capability, which I think most, uh, most of them do, you're not going to be able to cut threads in the wood. Therefore, I've decided the best way to go might just be a friction fit. Mine is for indoor use, although I'm pretty sure friction fit would be fine for outdoors even because it's not like they're going to lift off and go flying in the wind. So it's probably okay. One of the methods I came up with, as inefficient as it is, is just to wrap them in duct tape. But... I also figured uh, you might just be able to get like a pool noodle, wrap it around and get like, you know, a two and a half, three inch section of pool noodle, put it down over it and then just shave it off until it fits. That might work best. Otherwise, a friction fit is, in all honesty, the best I got. So we're going to go with that. And then hopefully I'll be able to show you what this looks like all said and done. Well, I'd say not too bad. It looks exactly how I want it to look. My things are a little loose, but I can fix that. It's not too heavy where it couldn't be supported if you, uh, you know, put it into a stud or outdoors if you put it into something solid. I'd say it turned out pretty well. Uh, one thing I will definitely say if you plan on using this for outdoor use, I would 
definitely make sure to inspect the fixture at least twice a year, once a season if you can, because the last thing you want is for your antique insulators to come crashing down. Um, for indoor use, you should inspect it at least once a year because wood will deteriorate. Less so indoors, but it will. And that's definitely a warning I want to give. Other than that, I think it turned out really well. This has been Hemingway 1893, and have fun building and collecting.